Hello, people of the internet. My name is Johnny, and welcome back to another reaction video. We haven't had a reaction video in a long, long time. I believe the last one we did was not including FNAF. I mean, not FNAF. Not including Fortnite, the, my reaction to, like, season 8. I think it might have been, like, The Hug. Who Lose The Hug was our last reaction video, which is a long time. I'm pretty sure that was October. So it's been a while. Um, today we are reacting to Mad Pats or the Game Theorist latest FNAF video. It is titled, hold on, let me, it is called F Game Theory, FNAF 7, The Untold Story of Sister Location. So, I have not seen it, uh, we're gonna jump it, jump into it pretty soon, right after this clip. Um, I'm not really sure what to expect, we barely have had any news revolving low, or, um, Involving lore, not revolving, Jesus. Involving lore, so I'm not really sure what he's gonna do with this. It is talking about FNAF 7, which we don't have a FNAF 7 yet, so not sure what it's gonna be talking about. It's talking about, wait, so FNAF 7, the untold story of Sis Location. Sis Location is FNAF 5, so I'm not sure what he's gonna be talking about. Uh, the thumbnail doesn't really have anything for me to go off of, it's just Golden Freddy with some eyes. It, it did have text, but I didn't read the text, so not really sure what to expect, but hopefully it's been it's been a long time since we've had a, um, a game theory about FNAF, because the last one was, what, January? It, 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 was, it was a long time ago. No, it, it was after, uh, what do you call it? Custom Night. So it was sometime mid last year, I think. So... It has merely been probably a year. It's probably been like half a month. Not, I mean, half a year since we've had a game theory about FNAF. So I'm not sure what to expect, but let's just get into it. All right, here we go. Let me up the volume. No. No. No, God, no. No. No, God, no. 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 All right then. Here's to a new FNAF theory. I'm ready. What the, what? Screw it. Let's talk about this thing. By all that's unholy, FNAF is somehow back. Theory Someone review. Got together their little summoning circle of Funko plushies and recycled Chuck E. Cheese pizza and awakened the sleeping behemoth that is Scott Cawthon. And now here we are with the new trailer for FNAF 7 and me. All right, it's pretty laggy. Hold on, let me fix it. And me. That's a teaser, not a trailer. pajamas. So thank you, internet. No also, can we just agree that this is creepy, right? Not me wearing kids' PJs, certainly, though, come to think of it, that is really weird. No, the fact that I'm in a nighty that is dedicated to an animatronic that gets dead children stuffed into him. Yeah, that's weird, but uh, man. Where, where's the theory going? Yeah, indie games. Now, at the end of last summer, FNAF was basically done. The book series had concluded, FNAF 6 had burned the series to the ground, and Ultimate Custom Night ended the story by trapping William Afton in eternal torment. All that was really left was the movie. Just like Jeremy laid to rest on a nearby hillside, it was time for the series to finally rest in peace. But then, back in November, Scott hopped onto Steam to give all us fredheads an update, and suddenly, the movie was the least certain thing of the group. A VR game? An AR game? More books? A third new game called Into Madness? Clearly Scott intended me to be the protagonist of that one since that's exactly Okay, um, I have a feeling Matt doesn't know that the new teaser is for the VR game. I, I think he thinks that the teaser is for Into Madness, but it's not. It's clearly for Help Wanted. Scott, Scott confirmed it over on Reddit, so either he's late with his script writing and this theory is about to be tossed out the window immediately, or there's something else up his sleeve. 
to where I'm headed to with so much new FNAF headed our way. Even a triple A game where apparently instead of stuffing children into animatronics, they start getting stuffed into loot boxes. Fast forward four months to today, and here we are with the first new Scott Cawthon teaser in nearly a year. A teaser for one of the items on this massive list of animatronic VR, sent to it's taunt clear. Me. But which one is it, and what it means for this new era of FNAF? Oh my god, did he really make a video about all the things hidden in the, in the teaser? That's not worth a game theory. Is exactly what we're exploring today. Unless so, he goes let's deeper. Get analyzing. First, let's just assess what we're seeing here, shall we? Clearly, you have five animatronics that are all melted together, which would be interesting enough on its own, but making it even more compelling is the fact that they all span the history of the franchise. You have Freddy, Foxy, and Bonnie all in their FNAF 1 forms, but then you also have the pre-mangle form of Funtime Foxy from Sister Location, and also pre-trapped spring trap from well a lot of different cutscenes throughout the series but most notably from the fruity maze minigame dating in fnaf 6. you can actually tell this based on the general shape of the nose as well as the lack of decay and aging that you normally does he see not know it's a fan-made model failure. but since this is a scott cawthon teaser you know that there's going to be more here than just a cool image if you throw this thing into photoshop and start brightening it up step one in any fnaf teaser analysis you're going to see the background has lines lines with some oddly inconsistent spacing. And of course, you have text. The quote is from Fazbear Entertainment in the upper right hand corner saying that everything is working as intended, but also a not quite so hidden bunch of text right here in the middle of the image that you really gotta squint to truly read. Don't listen to them, blank, let something inside. It was an accident, remember Jeremy. Jeremy? That's the guy from the gravestone, the night yep. guard who has his name on the paycheck from FNAF 2, the supposed bite of 87 victim. Ladies and gentlemen, sound the alarms. We are talking about the lobe lad himself, which means that there is only one option here. We are in the same continuity. Cue the party horns and cheerful children sound effects. I know we were all eager to throw out our textbooks at the end of last semester, guys, but it's time to break out FNAF lore for dummies one final time. Whoopity doo! Who's excited? This guy. I. I'm honestly finding it hard to tell if Matt's joking about him being mad that there's a new FNAF game coming. I know it's his character, but. I'm honestly finding it hard to tell. Yes. Now, creating my own ARG over the last couple months has taught me a lot of things, specifically better ways to hide and code messages. And one particularly effective but simple way to do it is by opening image files as text files. So if we open this image file in Notepad, we actually get our answer to that first missing word. Don't listen to them. We let something inside. It was an accident. Remember Jeremy. So with all of that evidence compiled, let's start analyzing analyzing before we start digging deeper because there's a lot deeper to go ladies and gentlemen we are just scratching the surface now the phrase remember jeremy actually tells us a lot of things here first it tells us both the speaker of that line and the person it's directed to know who jeremy is secondly it tells us that the events of this game are happening in the aftermath of his death which at this point is commonly accepted to be the result of the bite of 87. so from a timeline perspective it looks like this quote is coming after 1987 meaning that we're after the string of murders in the fnaf 2 location and around the time of michael afton's revisit to the fnaf 1 building and his discovery of sister locations location. In fact, knowing where in the timeline this quote must fall and seeing those lines in the background of the teaser, my mind immediately jumps to prison bars. Now, that seems like it might be a stretch. Clearly, yep. these are just meant to be tiles, and while yes, that's probably what they are, the inconsistent spacing still felt weird to me, and it resembled the narrow strip of horizontal bars that many prison doors have. Now think back, way back to when this story first started. Back to the secret newspapers from FNAF 1, the things that first told us that there was a deeper story to begin with. Quote, video surveillance identified the man responsible and led to his capture 
the following morning, end quote. And on the follow-up story, headline, five children now missing, suspect convicted. While the suspect has been charged, the bodies themselves were never found, end quote. So if these newspaper clippings are still considered canon, this former employee was convicted, meaning that they found him guilty, and as a result, most likely he went to prison for his crime. And we can be fairly confident that this isn't Afton, since his only comeuppance seems to have been the Springlock failure and the eventual eternal torment in HE double toothpicks, meaning that there is still a potential story to be told of someone there who's trapped in prison, wrongfully accused, haunted by the nightmarish amalgamation of animatronics that got him thrown into the slammer, at least. That's my wishful thinking for a potential plotline for one of these stories. Is it the story that we're getting in this game? Probably not. So the boy in Freddy pajamas can dream, can't he? Let's go back to the text. Don't trust them. That them could be referring to the animatronics, or it could be referring to the members of Fazbear Entertainment, that quote in the upper corner saying that everything is working as intended. Now, as established by Ultimate Custom Night, the only haunted characters who still possess rational thought are Baby and the Puppet. The others are like animals. But I am very aware. aware. Which eliminates so everyone that we currently see on screen here, thereby making it doubtful that the them in this quote is referring to the animatronics. Instead, this seems to be two employees of Fazbear Entertainment talking to each other, basically confirming not to trust what the bosses are saying. All the All other the lines here, we let something in, it was an accident, remember Jeremy, seem like those same co-workers realizing that something is wrong and that it relates to a mistake that they made, a mistake that's ultimately related to Jeremy's death, and now they're both worried about their own survival. Remember, Jeremy seems to me to read more like... So the only two walkers I can think of right now are Henry and Afton, who are the ones that started Fredbear's, or just something that I literally just came up with right now when it said technician, or the two technicians that died in Sis location on night... I want to say night three... Or night five, one of those. I think it might have been night five. Like, hey, remember that guy? We don't want to end up like him. So now, looking back across the games, what are some of the mistakes where something deadly has been let in? Well, you got Springtrap being let into Fazbear Fright in FNAF 3. You have basically the entirety of FNAF 6's salvage minigames and Ennard from Sister Location. Ennard, who, funny enough, during the false ending to that game, repeatedly begs you to let him in. You must help us. You must let us inside the room. You have to let me inside the room. I know it was an accident. And where? Ad. A free it's Mr. Beast. On Google, Oprah. This is the only ad I'm happy to see. Where in the series do we have two co-workers who wind up dead because they let something inside? Did I call technicians? Sister location. I freaking called now, it! It's a scene that's really easy to forget, but night five of Sister Location <laughs> actually starts with Michael Afton crawling through no the way. and suddenly coming across the hanged bodies of two former technicians. Co-workers. You gotta admit, that was a pretty good call on my part. Entered. So we have something where the placement in the timeline makes sense. The relationship of the characters to Jeremy as co-workers makes sense. Their skepticism of Fazbear Entertainment definitely makes sense. And you know what? That's not all. Their role... So is Matt Pat saying that two unbelievably minor characters, like hand unit, is more important than these two people? The, the dead tech, technicians are the main care. Excuse me, are the ones saying that these lines? I don't know. Specifically, as technicians kind of also skeptical. makes sense with everything that we're learning about this new game. You see, Scott wasn't content to just give us one teaser. Not sponsored <laughs> oh, by no. Coke, by the way. He gave us eight separate images teasing this new game, apparently to make up for lost time. Thanks, buddy. I mean, sure, we just analyzed the imagery and text of this one image, but if you check the source code of Scott's website, which at this point is FNAF research step two, right after brightening up the images, you'll notice odd strings of text, all with this tag, 
content equals. Well, if you take those strings of letters and plug them into the URL bar, it reveals a trove of new findings. The first and most important of them, we're gonna be playing as a technician. Here, in this image, we can actually see we know this. body opened up, ready to be worked on, which perfectly coincides with what Scott teased when he okay, good. mentioned the possibility of this new VR was, game. Wait. Quote, if you liked repairing Funtime Freddy up close and sister location, just wait until you try to do something like that in VR. VR, Does he not know about this? And personal with these huge animatronics that are just one mistake away from jumping at you. Does he nice jump scare by the way? Does he not know about the two posts that Scott made on Reddit? Literally Another a few of images, hours after. The one of Bonnie without the this? eye also is teasing at this idea of no longer being a guard, but rather an animatronic tech having to repair all not. of these robots. So could the main story of this new FNAF game actually be the story of these two hapless technicians who end their lives in an underground robotics bunker? If they the quote on this teaser is to be believed, the answer seems to be a solid yes. If it is, it even relates back to the title of the game. You see, going back to look at the source code yet again, you see that the original teaser image is listed as hw.jpg. Now, back in February, my buddy Daco tweeted out that a new hey, he made it got leaked on the ESRB ratings website. The ESRB, man, get your act together. First, you leak the Super Smash Brothers 4 roster, and now you're leaking the new FNAF game. It is time to stop. It's time, it's time, to, time stop. to stop, okay? And yes, this is someone else's meme, but I thought it was appropriate for the situation. Plus, I'm in pajamas, thought it would be funny. There it is. Yep. Filthy Frank, we miss you. But in all seriousness, this game's title is Five Nights at Freddy's VR Help Wanted. H. W, just like the name yep. of the teaser image. The description for this leaked game even confirms that you will be playing as a technician. Quote, once again, players assume the role of a repair person tasked with monitoring and repairing animatronic characters at a pizzeria. From a first person perspective, players explore dark hallways, complete puzzles, and try to avoid menacing, malfunctioning animatronic figures. The game contains frequent screams and jump scares with the words, you are dead, appearing on screen after players are attacked, end quote. And what happens when you lose two technicians to sudden animatronic related fatalities? It's time to find some more, throw up the sign, help wanted. So we have ourselves a VR game starring a technician who's repairing animatronics, slowly coming to realize that they've made a terrible career decision, or do we? Looking across all the other teaser images, it feels like this whole game may actually be disconnected. We see scenes from all the various settings we visited in this franchise. The tile floor behind that old model of Bonnie suggests that it's the FNAF 1 location. This shot- <laughs> the, the scene with FNAF 1 Bonnie doesn't seem like it could be in FNAF 1, even though it has the FNAF 1 model. Oh god, what else could tie it to- Ah! The tiled floor! The white, the white and black tiled checkered floor, which appears in the majority of the games. Out of spring trap looming in the background tells us that we're going to be visiting Fazbear Fright. The appearance of Funtime Foxy in the teaser suggests that we'll be visiting sister location for some challenges. And baby. Heck, we're even going to be invading the crying child's bedroom from FNAF 4 based on this shot of baby. Notice the iconic closets from that game as well as the bedspread design in the background. So, is this game just gonna be a bunch of vignettes? A compilation of the series' greatest scares, only now they're in VR? I don't think so. I do think that this game can and will tell its own unique story that builds out the lore of this franchise, and one of these teaser images solidifies that for me. True to form, Scott hit his biggest reveal the deepest. You see, going on to Scott Games one final time, and it's a lot of times to visit Scott Games just for one teaser. If he talks about the FNAF movie teaser being something other than the FNAF movie, what, you're gonna have a bad time, Matt. ...of this franchise, and one of these teaser images solidifies that for me. True to form, Scott hit his biggest reveal the deepest. You see, going on to Scott Games one final time, and it's a lot of times to visit Scott Games just for one teaser image, something seems a little off. 
if you're paying close enough attention. You see, the meta label for the website is actually misspelled with a zero in between the two T's. And if you go through the source code with a really fine tooth comb and a really keen eye, you'll actually notice a couple more typos. An R in content, a big old G in block quote, and an N in the word text. Zero R G N. Type those letters into the URL bar and you get this. Now, clearly it's been obscured very heavily, but if you blur it and affect the contrast a little bit, change some of the levels, you actually get something that looks more like this. Something that doesn't just look like an animatronic, but one animatronic in particular. Notice the half-closed eye. It's entered. It's Ennard's signature appearance. Half-closed eye, horizontal tube-like lips, an endoskeleton looking to be let in. So, there you have it. Notice how he didn't address the fact that that image was taken with a phone? Notice the fact that he didn't <laughs> say that the image is more... Uh, vertical than it is horizontal like all the other teasers I'm not I... <sighs> you frustrate me sometime man it's it's obvious it's for the movie it's so obvious we have ourselves a new VR game telling us the story of two technicians who made a fatal career decision. Based on the fact that the game already has a rating, I'm assuming that we're gonna probably see this one coming out pretty soon. It's weird, actually, to think about a FNAF game coming out on something like PlayStation 4, the PlayStation VR. I'm excited to see it. Will I be right in my predictions? Well, we're just gonna have to wait and see. And by wait, I mean it's probably out already now. As soon as I hit publish, it probably came out because, you know, that's how Scott goes. <laughs> the game's right? actually been finished for months. Is it? Is it out? Is it out yet? How about now? Right now. It's, it's there. Nothing? All right. Screw it. I'm going to go get out of these pajamas. But hey, did you notice the new theory where we call it Chaos Theory? It's a name that I have a lot of fun with, and it's available right now on the merch site. Link. Now, I watch a lot of game theory, and I, I'm, I'm usually aware when he comes out with new merch, but very, very clever choice for picking your first FNAF theory in half a year to, uh, to promote your new merch. That's, that's actually a really smart move. And now that it's a FNAF theory, everyone's going to see it. There's going to be so many people buying your merch. Matt, you are such a smart man. Don't get me wrong. I love Matt. He's a really smart guy. He's awesome. But I don't know. This this theory. Hold on, wait. Let me let me get into full screen mode so you can look at this face more. Oh, wait. Quickly before I head out. Um, yeah, nearly 3 minute advertisement for for his merch. And is he sponsored by Honey? Yeah. 3 Did I say 3 hours? I meant 3 minutes. Three whole minutes of nothing but advertisements. Nice job, Matt. Now, like I said, I love Matt. He's a very talented fellow. He's smart. He's incredible. He's done so many amazing things for YouTube, gaming, like all communities out there. He's been unbelievable. And it's always important when he comes out with a FNAF theory because most of the time it's, you know, it's groundbreaking you know, the FNAF Chica Beak back in FNAF 4, who, um, when he came up with the Dream Theory, that was, um, the most accepted theory in the community back then, and now, more recently, he pieced together the timeline, and now he's come out with FNAF VR, which wasn't a theory, it, it let's be honest here, guys, it wasn't a theory, it's more of a game fact, but, you know, there's been so many... I feel like he just did this. A, because there's m there's more news. B, and I hate to be this guy, but I feel like he just made it to... I don't know, to... to hmm. A, to promote his new merch, because he, he... Matt knows, he obviously knows that loads of people watch his FNAF theories, watch his FNAF videos. So, 
Of course, it would be the first video where he promotes his new merch. And, I don't know, just the things he said in the video, we already knew. We've known for, I think it's been like 12 days. I don't know. I, I always check um, Scott's Reddit now to see if he's posted anything. And it, I'm pretty sure it's like 12 or 13 days ago he released the, um, you know, uh, thing where he talks about the VR. So I feel like, did I say not sponsored by Coke? Not sponsored by Coke. Um, I feel like this video was unnecessary, but I feel like it was just out there to get a quick buck. I hate to be that guy, but it feels like that's why he did it. You know, we got Darko, Teresa Cole, me, <laughs> me, guys, please, me, you know, already talked about this. Um, and Scott even confirmed it over on Reddit. So I don't really understand why he made a video about this. I I find it great that he's informing people about it, but I feel like he should have just waited until the game came out, because it's coming out soon. Even he said it's coming out soon. So I feel like he should have just waited until the game came out and made a video about it then, and all the secrets that it had. Um, I'm not really sure about the... Like, obviously we're going to be a technician, and obviously... You know, it's going to have to fit in with all the story, all the previous games' story. I'm not sure about the two technicians in this location. It might be. Those are really the only two um, technicians we've had in the game other than Afton. And Henry, I guess, because he walked on the robots. But I don't think we're going to be playing as Henry. Definitely not going to play as William. Um, Michael, maybe... I, I, I don't know. The Sys Location Technicians are a possibility, but I don't know how I feel about it. It's kind of that weird middle ground where it's like, it it's plausible, plausible, it could happen, and then it's, on the other side, it's, eh, I don't really know, so I'm kind of in the middle with that. But, this theory, I was, I was hoping for a bit more. Again, it was more like, it was just any other FNAF news video. That, again, you would see from, like, Darko or Treesicle. So, I don't know. Sorry, Matt Pat, <laughs> But I, I honestly feel like he should have waited. I love seeing FNAF news. I love seeing FNAF theories by him. But I feel like this just wasn't good, you know. It, it was good, don't get me wrong. It was weird how the style is different with, instead of having, like, a Photoshop picture of him. He was moving moving around in front of a green screen. That was pretty cool. Uh, I do like that style a lot. Um, just as a suggestion, um, when you copy claim, when you copyright claim this, because I know you will, Matt Pat, right? I love you, man. <laughs> uh, my two other reaction videos to his game theory got copyright claimed. So cool. I love having <laughs> my videos copyright claimed. But anyways, really good theory. Actually, no, <laughs> pretty good video. Honestly, I don't find it necessary, but who knows? You know, I enjoyed watching it. I always enjoy watching his theories, his videos, whether it's FNAF or not. But I just don't feel like this one was really necessary. But don't get me wrong, I did like it. I always, because I know people are going to lash out at me when I say, I, I feel like it wasn't necessary, you know? Like, nearly two weeks ago we learned about this, so... Just don't get me wrong, guys. I do love Matt Pat. He's awesome. He's unbelievably he's unbelievably talented. But I just don't feel like this was necessary at this moment of time. I feel like he should have waited till the game came out and then made a video trying to, I don't know, fit in the timeline. But anyways, that's it. That's my reaction to FNAF 7, The Untold Truth About Sis Location. Pretty sure it's called. I already closed it out the window, so whatever. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. Link to the original theory down below. And I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye. Matt Pat. I love you, man. Please don't copyright claim me.